<laughs> we're playing some uh, some great moments from the last three weeks and some great records, Steve, from the last two weeks. <laughs> That's true enough. Yeah, we're not actually here today. Um, what are you up to today, Rick? Um, it's eight hours earlier, so um, this is about two o'clock probably. Mm -hmm. So it's about six o'clock in the morning. I'm still in bed, mate. I'm asleep in, <laughs> okay. the, in my hotel room. Now, where are you? We're in LA. Los Angeles. Yeah. City of Angels, Rick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. City of Angels. Yeah, yeah. and so that's what we're doing. We're doing double that's why we're not here. We're not here next week either, so next week is the best of this week. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> uh. Someone's left one of those little things in here. It's brilliant, isn't it's it? It's amazing. What are they called, those things? I just, I imagine they're just there, I was thinking of being in the front row at a Morrissey concert and going, oh, I'll just, can I just play along? <laughs> <laughs> they are brilliant. I uh, don't know what kind of sign that is. I don't know. I, it's only used for when Kenneth Williams <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, sees someone <laughs> undressing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the only time that yeah. is used, that noise. <laughs> exactly. That is brilliant. But it's like it was specially created for the Carry On films. <laughs> yeah, we need- I don't know what it is, but we need something when I walk in and see someone changing. Well, what about this? <laughs> there is a light that never goes out by the Smiths. Um, I phoned, uh, Carl up in the week, yeah, and, uh, I said, uh, what are you doing? He went, well, even though it's one of my days off, I'm just doing some research on the web. Went, found anything and said, yeah, I'm doing science. And then he said, you can get wigs for dogs in Tokyo. <laughs> That's his scientific fact. Yeah. And I went, what do you mean? You, you, dogs, if they need a wig. I said, if they need a wig, what, dogs going bald? <laughs> and he went, like, this is fine to him. He went, it's a stressful city, Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> the world's all right with Carl. He's always got an explanation. <laughs> I've only ever seen him confused once. When, in Edinburgh, he looked out of his window one day and he saw a bloke put in a parking ticket on some rubbish. Yeah. And that genuinely confused him. Yeah. He couldn't work out, could you? It's a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> but, but the and, the baby, and the woman breastfeeding her eight-year-old child didn't, you didn't like, did you? I don't like that. But, um, the what's the name? Animals with wigs. I kind of thought, after I put the phone down to you, I kind of <laughs> thought about it and thought, yeah, it's a bit daft, that. Are you sure it's not the, the ageing pop group? No. The but, animals? But when you think, have you ever seen, like, a bald pet? No. The, the, it's weird. <laughs> Because my mum, um, we had a cat, we used to get through loads of cats because we lived in <laughs> a- <laughs> Oh god, it's starting early today, isn't it? What do you mean you it's got It's only ten past cats. one. Just cause, cause what we lived are you doing? No, Running lived, a restaurant? We lived on- <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, what do you mean? No, we lived on like a main road. Oh yeah. Right? So yeah. we used to get through a lot of them. They don't kept saying, risk. you know, stop wasting money, you know, we, it's, it's not stop good. Stop wasting money, not wasting yeah. cats! Right, so, um, anyway, we had this cat that was ill all the time. Mm. And, uh, <laughs> He's just bag of noobs, probably. <laughs> yeah, Malingra! <laughs> yeah, I'm terrified- I'm going to witch house. Vroom! Oh, God, bloody hell! Vroom! <laughs> don't, so, don't let me go to the Pilkingtons! <laughs> <laughs> and it, 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 for some reason it kept being sick all the time. Right? Yeah, <laughs> that is noobs, that's definitely noobs. So, my mum- so, I kind of thought, oh, I've had enough of this, and she <laughs> shaved it. What? Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Now, I know, I know you're not vets in your family, but what correlation did your mum think there was between you being sick and shaving it? Because it kept being sick, and it was a pain to wash, because it kept getting So, she off. wanted a dry wipe cat. <laughs> so, <laughs> why didn't she just varnish it? <laughs> <laughs> what? It's weird, but, it's weird so, so, now, so, now he's cold and sick. <laughs> No, but do you, no, not, I mean, not all of it, she left sort of the back half, but sort of from, from its waist, sort of- I love that! Shave it, cos it's sick on itself! Yeah. And, uh, is, it's, it was yes. the weirdest looking thing. I mean, no, normally I like cats, I'm always like giving yours a stroke on the head and that. Yeah. As soon as she did that, it was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck Can't me! Touch it. And then- So now it's sick, cold, and hated. Yeah. I love- I-, I Carl! It must have, I mean, other, the other cats must have been taking the mick out of it constantly. It's just making things worse. Did it get, I'm hoping that it got run over and was put out of its misery. No, I think it, I think it got alright, that one. Or is that the, <laughs> yeah, it did get run over. <laughs> <laughs> it did, ah! Oh, God! <laughs> oh! So. Oh, dear. <laughs> How many cats do you say you've got through? I'd say when I, whilst I was living at home, I mean, it's, it's still on the increase even though I'm not there. <laughs> so, but I, whilst, whilst I was there, 
<laughs> probably five. Oh, God. Yeah, wow. Oh. Yeah. And were you upset each time or you just got used to it? It's- it's one of them things, innit, like I've said before, when you first see something it's a bit of a shock. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's like the elephant man or whatever. <gasps> yeah. First time you see him it's that sort of, oh, look at that. Yeah. Do you remember the first time you saw Steve? No, I'm not being funny. Do you remember the f- the, 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 the first- Yeah, but I've said this before, it's always, <laughs> then you get used to how people look and you don't- <laughs> No, no. You... I'm gonna burst! I'm gonna- you have to play a record! No, but- Cause I just see <laughs> Steve's <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've got used to it. Shut up. Shut up. Well, here we are again, XFM, on a Saturday. Just gone one o'clock, Steve, mm -hmm. if I'm very much mistaken. But we're not here, no. as such. We're away again. Gallivanting <laughs> around. Yeah. Uh, um, we've got to do the special sort of best of again. Okay. Which we did a few weeks ago, so this is the best of the last three weeks. <laughs> um, which I think is, I mean, I think it's the best three weeks we've ever had. <laughs> but I'd like it condensed into two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some great music as well in there. Yeah, there'd be some great music, uh, uh interspersed with, with fine chat that you've already heard. <laughs> yeah. Except this bit, this bit's new. We've actually, uh, out of the kindness of our heart, we've come in, um, we've come in last week. Yeah. Yeah. And we've done a few clips. Just because we felt a bit guilty about shooting off yeah. and leaving. I mean, I, even now, having heard this link, I'm beginning to wonder if it was worth our time. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, should we play a classic link? Let's play, I'd love, what, from the last three weeks? After this, this is Feeder. <laughs> Right, if you've just tuned in, it's XFM 104.9, you've got that bit right. Ricky Gervais Shoe with me, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. Carl is actually in a little booth. We're not in the studio, you see. We're, this is pre-recorded. We recorded this last week because we're away. And it's sort of like the best of. Best of the last three weeks since last time we were away when we put out the best of. <laughs> it's a long time since we've had any white van, Carl. For those that uh, don't remember this particular hot feature, <laughs> um, yeah. we basically ask Carl some of the questions that are asked of a white van driver in the sun. They always have this on Saturday afternoons. Anyway, here's the first one. Oh, they're not fascinating, Carl, but I'm just interested on your take, really. Yeah. What do you make of Scylla Black quitting Blind Date after her husband sent a message from beyond the grave? Are you familiar know, with this story? I didn't story? know that. What's, yeah. what's that? She went to see a medium and, uh, supposedly her husband passed on information through the medium, which was incredibly vague, but, um, persuaded her to quit live on air. Well, it's about, it's about time, isn't it? If even dead people are saying, <laughs> I'm not enough. <laughs> ah! Oh, but I'll tell you what though, talking genius. about- talking about ghosts and that, do you know how I'm into them? Yeah. yeah. Right? How weird do you think this is, right? Well, it's not true. Before you say it, <laughs> play a record. No, go on, go on. Uh, <laughs> go on. Right, it's this woman. <clears throat> oh, I don't yeah. even know if it's ghost really, it's just a bit weird. Sure. Yeah. Sure. There's this woman yeah. and she's- well, she's not a woman, she's a kid. Sure. <laughs> Okay. Sure. She's, she's walking down like a, a street in her area. It's a nice day and everything. Everything's normal. Um, she's walking down and a woman comes up cycling past, right? The woman on the bike looks at the kid absolutely terrified, right? right. Got a really scary face on her. Yeah. The kid's thinking, why, why is she doing that? Yeah. Right? So anyway, she thinks nothing, nothing of it. Goes, you know, I think she was playing in the park or whatever. Goes and has a nice day. About 15 years later. Oh, right, yeah. She's, I don't know, I think she was going to work, right, on a bike. She's riding her own bike. Riding okay. her own bike, cycling down the road. Oh, yeah. Looks at the kid. That's the thing that happened, like, 15, 20 years ago. Right. It's her on the bike looking at her as a kid. Right. Not, you, not, not another child. No. So right. it's her, she's seen right, herself. Uh, what, Carl? <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, I don't know where to start. Firstly, where's this information come from? But I mean, what, why do you ever con- I mean, I don't know what part of that you think can be true. I- I don't- I- I- I'm honest, I'm- oh, I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's a bit weird though, isn't it? But it's not true. It didn't happen, nothing happened like that. She said it did. Well, Who? she's wrong. Who? She said she saw herself. She saw herself as a kid, didn't she? Did she come and, uh, on and as an adult when she was a kid? <laughs> did, did she stop <laughs> and talk to herself, or did she ride on by and think that's a bit weird? There's me as an eight-year-old. <sighs> I won't stop. I'll be late for work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm late again, the boss said he'd be in trouble. Yeah. 
Oh. And where is this information? Was it, did it happen to someone you know? No. You overheard it on the bus? No, it was in, uh, it's in the fourteen times. Ah, right. Well, uh, okay. that's the answer. Good. We've okay. got to the bottom of that. Right, good. Carl, let me ask you now, um, Carl, you will be a little bit unnerved about this. Have you seen the film Jurassic Park? Yeah. You know what happened there? Well, according to yeah. the sign here, it says scientists are planning to clone mammoths for a theme park. Look at his face. Look at that. He looks like a dog caught in the, the headlights of a car. He's terrified. I love Carl. He sprung to attention Carl. there. I lo that's, is that, is that the best news you could have? Man moths. <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah, man Carl, moths. I man love moths. the fact that that's why he was so excited that they bred a man moth. What is what is this? Yeah, it's it's a human being that that hides in your wardrobe and eats an entire jacket in a day. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean, man moths? Mammoths. Mammoth. The big hairy cow the from the Ice Age. I mean, right. elephant. You're not so excited yeah. about that then. <laughs> you can take or leave bringing back mammoths to life, but a man moth. A man moth is a different matter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if we'd- if we'd have uh, never brought that up, he'd have gone and told someone now. Yeah. You know, they've bred an half man, half moth. This and is that's what how, we this mean. how things start. This you is what we mean when you, you hear these ghost stories. Are you stories? slightly deaf? Is that it? When you hear these stories, is it- I- Is- Carl, uh, Carl is English your first language? <laughs> Are you actually foreign? Is that yeah, the thing? Yeah. Do, should we well, speak slower? When we say slower? foreign, we, we mean not of this planet. Yeah. Should we speak slower? Would that be a help to you? No. Go, go on. Next what do you make of that? Do you think that's good? Do we good to bring back, back mammoths? Prehistoric elements? These giant elephants. They're, they're slow, yeah. aren't they? It's not as if they're gonna, like, get out and run fast and they can't capture them. They'd probably be a fence, to be honest, Carl. They'd probably be a fence. No, but, 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 they're, but you're asking it as if, like, oh, it could all go wrong, but it couldn't, could it? Well, really? but, 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 but the point was about uh, Jurassic Park is they thought it wouldn't go wrong, they thought they had it all under yeah, control. Well, have you learned nothing from uh, Jurassic Park, Carl? Dinosaurs would say, oh, think about it before you do it, <laughs> but with a, with a airy elephant, it's, it's not gonna- Not a concern for you. Would I'll you go along to see him? Would you be interested in that? If it was in the area. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best. He's great, isn't he? I'd love- I'd love a cue, Nothing right? impresses No, him. but what I'd like to do is Carl sitting like Yoda in a little cave, and I'd just like to see people like Tony Blair and, you know, Stephen Hawking's in a queue, and they go and say, Carl, got a bit of a problem. Um, yeah, and thinking it, of cloning a man and a moth. Yeah. Problem? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> not an issue. No, if I'm in the area, I want to close and have a look at it, otherwise just don't send it near my, uh, my um, clothes. Oh, that's fantastic. So, so it's just for a what, second, what, what's as, the, as the words man moth, came into your head. W how excited were you? I mean, were you both terrified and excited? For- just for the moment when you thought that they'd cloned a man and a moth? I pictured, um... What kind of face I'll, did he have? Was, did he have the moth's head or was it a man's head? Just a little head. Little man head. Right, what- what was his face? <laughs> what did it look like? Just- he just was like a bit like- A bit, bit shocked. perplexed, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, like, so it was like he'd been, he'd been, he'd been grafted onto the body of a moth yeah. without his, his consent. And when he was asleep. Yeah, yeah he'd woke up. He just, he just went in for a rather goiter removed, yeah. and they said, we've replaced we your with goiter wings. with the body of a giant moth. Yeah. Just Is that alright, Mr. Jenkins? So he had the head of a, a little, was it a little boy or a man? Little man. Right, okay. And he's just bumping into a lamp. <laughs> he's just bumping into a lamp. <laughs> if you, Carl, if you, if you uh, went into hospital, and they'd done something. What, what's the worst thing they'd do, right? What would you rather have done, do you, right? You wake up and you've got, um, lobster claws for hands. Right. You wake up and you've got duck's feet. Uh, or you wake up and you've got one horn coming out of your head. The worst thing. Yeah. Probably the, uh, <laughs> the horn coming out of my head. Why? Get in the way. <laughs> That'd be useful, wouldn't it? In fights and stuff. And, uh, for, like, parties, people would play well, points. I the lobster claws would also be quite handy there. <laughs> Oh, that's a wonderful, wonderful clip, and uh, yeah. oh, a great uh, record that preceded or followed it, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, dear. Could, I, could I make some dedications? Yeah. Because I, uh, last week, uh, just before we had to come in to record this, yeah. uh, I popped out uh, trying to get onto the tube, and I had a nightmare, because there were loads, millions, of protesters, so-called yeah. protesters. Now, a lot of them obviously doing good work. There was one fella, I think you'd have appreciated it, because I know you are very politically active, oh. and I think this guy has really studied hard, and he's realised the best way to make his voice heard on the international political stage mm. is to <laughs> ride around on a tricycle wearing a <laughs> jester's hat. <laughs> oh. He was really shaking up the bloody I government. wouldn't want to be George W. Bush about now. <laughs> Not indeed. Once he sees that. Once he sees that guy. And most of his aides rushing in and going, uh, uh, George W., um, Look at this guy. 
Where's that? That's in London, England. Okay, call off the forces. Is that a large tricycle? <laughs> yeah. Is he wearing a nappy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, get me Colin Powell. Why'd you call him Colin and not Colin? It's the way he likes it. Don't f about. Just call off the troops. There's a f in the jester's hat. F call the troops off. Just bleep some of those bits. <laughs> XFM 104.9 of a Saturday. Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Hello there. But we're not here. No, we're away. Um, so this is the best of, and I hope you're enjoying it. Um, we certainly are. Um, I had some exciting news this week, Carl. You'll be pleased to find out. Um, I d I, I'm worried that you might get a little bit jealous because it's obviously going to impact on your world quite strongly. Because I know you think you'd like things to be quite, the, quite sa you know, samey. You'd like the status quo to be maintained. You like the fact that in the past, you know, we've had some crosswords. You know, because you've. I remember. What did you think of me when I first walked in? When I first came yeah, in on the yeah, first well, day of XFM? I don't XFM? know why you're making a big deal. Do you want to bring? Do you want to I'm just being honest, honest though. I'm just well, being honest about a lot of people who see you for the first time sort of go, "Well, he's a bit weird." <laughs> Ooh, ooh, I know that Steve that you brought it up, and then you're again. But I'm sure that wasn't what he said before. No, did he, he said before. I, yeah, he, well, well, he was I, a bit weird. Yeah, well, I, he looked at you, and uh, I knew I could see by the look of his face. You know when uh, when you know you your kid, and your kid's sort of scared of something, and they go, "Why is your kid?" I goes, "Oh, he doesn't like pigeons or spiders." Right. It was like that when I saw Carl, and I brought you in, and I went, "What do you think of that, Carl?" I could see the look in his face that he di he was disturbed. Sure. And then, as he said. You get used to it, don't you? Yeah, you get used to it. And you, and you have changed a little bit. Your hair's a bit smarter now, and you've got some nicer glasses and that, I think. <laughs> or I might have just got used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Don't bring it up, Steve. Don't well, look at me like that. So you say that you think some other people in the office thought the same? Do you know that for sure? Carl. Did you discuss it? Carl. Yeah, I think, I think they do, yeah. Okay, leave it there then. But not just in the office. As you walk <laughs> through the building. It's worse than you ever thought. Well, no, it's not worse than I ever thought because, as you well know, Ricky Gervais. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what did I do on uh, Thursday morning? Oh, is this the thing? Uh, for those uh, that perhaps are, are not of the female persuasion listening, there's a magazine. Apparently, it sells quite well. It's one of the sort of female, you know, kind of uh, issues magazines. I think it's called Company Magazine. You know, it's like your sort of. I guess it's a bit like your Moore or your Vanity Fair or yeah. whatever. Anyway, they run every year the 50 most eligible bachelors in Great Britain section. Ding dong, hello. Who's in there this year? In the f in the 50, in the top 50 of the entire country. And then they vote, they vote and they put them in order and see who is the most eligible bachelor. But that's on, that's 50 people, right? Most, I mean the, I, it always annoys me slightly because bachelor, it, it, it kind of seems like a more sophisticated word for loser. Yeah, it? No. Which always sort of unnerves And me also they try and do a different 50 every year, so they're but getting pretty desperate to get different ones. No, you know, no, no, not no, many, no, no, Because no, also no. a lot of people who are sort of like successful, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, are married, so there's very little to- No, 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 on, no, no, there's a huge- no, there's a huge- I don't know if this is international, it could even be international, I'm sure. not sure actually, so sure. I could be up there with the likes of Justin Timberlake, sure. etc. So, uh, Fred Durst. Yeah. That sort of person, you know. So anyway, l l this is what's exciting, right? Although I'm slightly frustrated because they were telling me that last year- all right, uh, they get- because what happens is the, your, the readers of the magazine, they vote for who they think is number one most eligible bachelor, right? Last year, the, uh, the prize was a two-week trip in the Bahamas, okay? This year, I'm rather annoyed because all I'm gonna win is a moped. That's whoa, the whoa, prize whoa, this year, whoa, that's whoa, the whoa, prize this year, whoa, a moped. Whoa, 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 backtrack. What? Sorry? Last year was a two-week trip to Bahamas and this year Just what? a moped, I'm all, all I'm gonna get is a moped. All you're gonna win is a moped. Yeah, I'm you're so- not gonna, You've got no chance. You're You've got enough. no chance. Who else is in it? Who else is in it? Well, I mean, I don't know lots and lots of people you never heard of. There was, I know Duncan from Blue. Ding. Is in this. So, no. it, so you're second to him at least no. already. I imagine you're you're going to come behind the other forty nine. No, 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 so, uh, no, 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 because you know, there'll be people voting for me. They yeah, get to vote for me. Yeah, Steve. They'll see, was, my, they'll see my photo. Uh, and they can vote to, for me. Yeah, according to he, I was twenty second most sexy man in the world. I better take that helmet back. I would. ACDC. Brilliant. You shook me all night long on XFM 104.9. Well, this show is a rockin'. It is. It is Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Quick, um, query for you. This is from, uh, Jay. He's got a problem here. Um, he says, uh, my parents won't let me ditch my studies. He's currently reading modern languages at London University. Sure. He wants to follow his dream, but his parents won't let him, of being a dancer. 
Carl. Worse than that, he says that they're trying to arrange a marriage to a bunch of, uh, minging daughters of people they know from good families. He doesn't know what to do, so he's got the arranged marriage coming along and he's also got, you know, he basically wants to, you know, wants to be a dancer. His parents are forcing him into, um, something more practical. Well, the first thing, right, I don't think- Live the, your dreams? The arranged marriage thing is such a bad idea. Okay. Cause mm. I think too many people go on looks. Right. And then you soon get bored of that mm -hmm. and you find out the person who you're knocking about with. It's actually not your type. Right. right. Why don't you arrange marriages for people? Well, uh, I'm just saying, right, so I'd say, uh, Jay, go along with that. I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. I mean, if they're really ugly, then, you know, don't go along with it, but if they're half bad, yeah. put up with it. That's sure. right. The dancing- Brilliant. Right? <laughs> That's that solved. Brilliant. I wanted to be a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> After I did the boxing, right, I joined, uh, joined a dancing thing just near, um, Man United's ground, right, called Twiggies. <laughs> um, <laughs> went it? along, I wanted to learn some moves. And How I, old were you? Well, it was when Michael Jackson was, like, pretty big, so about 80, Five. 83, 84, 85, oh, yeah. something like that, around there. Um, wanted to do it. Um, when I went, it was shut and it had become like a warehouse for uh, toilet rolls. <laughs> so in a way, I wonder what would have happened. Sorry, sorry, how is that an anecdote about you going through <laughs> dancing? Well, You've I'm told me before, you what, you did boxing for a while, you did dancing for a while, you had <laughs> two fight in the boxing, you didn't <laughs> even get in the pl That's not an- You- yeah, Imagine if that was a film! This is <laughs> a, a, a boy's dream of becoming a dancer. <laughs> oh, it's shut. Next on. I mean, you- How is that a story? Yeah, that was Billy Elliot. Do you think he won, <laughs> he won quite as many awards? Yeah, yeah, a brilliant. Footloose. All right, <laughs> yeah. I'm fed up, they banned it. Let's go- Oh, it's shut. <laughs> um, do, 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 do. Yeah. Flash dance. First, there was- <laughs> uh, it's a warehouse. <laughs> Never mind. You. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, you'll find something else. I, I can't- I think I got a go-kart after that. <laughs> I bought a motorised go-kart and kept myself busy with that. So, <laughs> there's always, there's always other Just things. think, Alan Bennett has to sit down and really sweat over his stories. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He so, just opens his mouth. You are a living Alan Bennett character. So that's uh, that. So, so that's, that's all. Well, Jay, don't worry about that. There's, um, no emotional there- emotional problems, I can foresee. Uh, if you follow that advice- So the advice there that. is, do an arranged marriage. It, 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 if she's not If she's not ugly. minging. Yeah. If she's not completely minging. Yeah. Uh, and don't worry about dancing, get a go-kart. Cheers. <laughs> Great. <laughs> XFM 104.9, we're not here. Um, this next clip is one of my favourite clips. Uh, look, it needs no introduction, here it is. What should we do next? What should we do next? It's too much. We, uh, get, do we need them out of the way? Let's get, get do we need them out of the way? Yeah, just, uh, let's, again, uh, let's explain it again. If you're new, um, I'm sort of on a bit of a mission to find out, you know, we've got a lot of animals and insects in the world and stuff. Yeah. Um, do we need them all? <laughs> it still amuses me. <laughs> so we've found out we've got to keep jellyfish, we've done octopus, just yeah. said we've got to keep them. This week, snails. Do we need them? <laughs> Just doing some research, uh -huh. right? Um, I'm sort of working my way through different creatures and insects and stuff that's right. on the planet. Yeah. Right? Um, and finding out if we need them or not, right? Yeah. Do you know much about snails? Well, um, sea snails? Well, yeah. Snails in general. Um, I don't know much about snails, land snails, I know a bit about sea snails, like whelks, top shells, that sort of thing. Would you say they're important? Um, what sort of sense do you mean by important? Say if we had to sort of get rid of some animals and insects and that, because we're running out of room. Right. Do you know what I mean? Because cause I'll tell you what I know about some snails. I don't know if this applies to sea snails as well. I mean, I called you today because a, a lot of other places are, are shut. Yeah. Right? So, um, I know, um, they like to eat stamps, apparently. The glue on stamps. They right. love it. Right? Right. Um, apparently a lot of, um, letters and stuff aren't getting to where they're meant to be getting because snails are crawling into letter boxes and right. eating the stamps. That obviously doesn't apply to the sea ones, mm. but that, that's a problem they're causing. All right. Uh, are you, were you aware of that? No. I, I don't know that. But you're glad you answered the phone today. Right. They love beer. Beer, yeah. Who doesn't? And also, I don't know if this is right, but I heard that they sleep for 13 years, or can do. Right. I've, 
I wouldn't know if they can sleep for 13 years or not, but... I mean, sea snails are pretty important. Yeah, they're, they're, they do quite a good job in the sea. They uh, um, graze on algae in there. But, they but provide food for other other animals. I mean, you can say that about any fish. You know, oh, any animal, why do they why do they exist? Would, would you be yeah. upset if, you know, someone said, we're getting rid of them? Oh, yeah, yeah. You would they're, be? They're an animal, you know, I wouldn't... Forget being like favouritism and all that I get for them, right? There'll yeah. be other things knocking around you can sort of spend your time looking after. You'll still have a job, don't be worrying about that, because I'm not going to get rid of all the fish. Jellyfish need looking after, so you're safe. Yeah. But do we need them? Come on, there's loads of people saying, come on, we've got to move on through the animals, and you're holding them up saying, well, I, I want to keep them. Well, who's, who's saying we need to... That just sounds a bit, just sounds a bit crazy to me. Just, just imagine... Do you know what I mean? And, and they would come to you because you're working in an aquarium, so they'd, they'd be asking for your advice. Right. And you're slowing it down. Well, they asked for my advice and I'm giving it to them, so, you know, that's what I think, anyway. Yeah, but snails, you know, I mean, like I say, they, they drink beer and that, you know. What do, what do they do apart from uh, some food for a, for a whelk? They were, they were around, their descendants were around a lot longer, uh, longer than we have been. Yeah, they've been around a long time, but what have they done? Well, they survived that long, so they must be doing something pretty good. Well, apparently they sleep for 13 years, so really, even though they've been around for ages... I, 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 I think that sounds a bit... I don't think they sleep for 13 years. Not all, I mean, not all of them, just, just, the, just the tired ones. So, snails, do we need them? Well, yeah, I just think they've got to, just as, you know, it's not for us to say, do we need them or not, we can't just... So, so you think we should keep them? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Carl, 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 I'm proud of you. That He's was getting really quite annoyed. I know. Why did he, what did he think he was doing? What? <laughs> I don't know what you tell these people. I mean, you don't get their permission to play this out, do you? You well, don't tell the me. thing is, right, <laughs> I, yeah, I sort of told him what it was about, but we won't say who he is or where he works, because it doesn't matter. <laughs> I just needed to speak so, to someone who knows. <laughs> I know the fact that you were trying to get an answer out of him by suggesting that he would be <laughs> safe, because he could look after jellyfish if he gave the okay to destroy snails. <laughs> he was I, getting livid, you could oh, tell. Oh, God. Brilliant. So they've uh, been around a long time, but what have they done? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, right, last week when I did Do We Need Them, um, do you know when I called up, um, one of the museums in a science museum? Yeah, are you talking to me? Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, I, I wanted to tell you before when the song was on, but you're so busy listening to it. Yeah, oh, oh, to... oh, was I so busy listening to a song I was playing? Yeah, but we're doing a radio show, aren't All right, we? what's your point? <laughs> well, I just wanted to say, she emailed in to say I got her name wrong, so I'm just apologising for that. What did you just call her? I think I called her Jessica. What was her name? I don't know, I've got it on email somewhere. Well, this is not an apology! <laughs> no, no, I'm You've just got saying... it wrong again! You've not even said her real name! How is that an apology? Well, I remember, I read the email, so, uh, yeah, I-, I But I, uh, who are you apologizing to? Apologizing to? I think her name's Jackie, I think. Oh, you've got it wrong again, haven't you? you well, uh, well, anyway, and she just said if you, you know, if you want to see dinosaurs and that, go to the, uh, museum. You were complaining about that as well, weren't you? You went to a museum and there was too many dinosaurs. You just said, he said you just need four. <laughs> no, well, Steve, have you been to the one at, <laughs> in Knightsbridge? I think this so. This one that I called up, right? It's nice. You go in, you <laughs> get a good collection of stuff. You walk in, there's three or four dinosaurs. You've had enough, right? <laughs> go to, I went into New York, right? Went to the museum there, hundreds of them. You can't <laughs> move for dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like they're responsible for them being extinct. <laughs> <laughs> There's loads of them. So all I'm saying is, if you want to see a dinosaur, um, go to the one near Knightsbridge. They've got a nice selection, some old vases and stuff. <laughs> it's worth going. So <laughs> that was great, Carl. Play a record. Well, well done. Of, uh, bit of Amy Man. Oh, I'm obsessed with this song, Red Vines. It's it's brilliant. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais show with, uh, Steve Merchant, hello there. Yep. And, um, we're not here this week, we're off jetting around the world, so we've pre-recorded these links. Uh, the time is currently somewhere between one and three o'clock. So, uh, a time check there from Steve Merchant. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, and, uh, oh, what, what about this weather? Um, isn't it warm, stroke, edit that, Carl, cold, okay, whichever one. Mm. Um. I'm pleased to see that the congestion charge has 
had some considerable effect. Had no effect. So just, yeah. Um, oh, wasn't that great on telly last night, the film? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I particularly enjoyed last night's EastEnders, Coronation Street, <laughs> Brookside. How, how, like, a lad left his family because there was problems at home and that. He went and lived in the wood, he got airy. Right? Yes, and no, leave it there, oh, we haven't got time to go into right, it. Right, so. That's what happened. And that's what happened, he lived with the monkeys, he went airy. That's, anyway, what, happened. No, that's what happened. Looked into, uh, <laughs> some other stuff about, like, airy kids and all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Came across this story about a bloke, right, who worked in a zoo. Oh dear. Right. So, uh. Um, Trouble's brewing. L loving his job and that, but. It's, qu it's quite a lonely sort of job because you don't see many people, you're just dealing with animals all the time, right? Mm. So, anyway, well. he gets a bit pally with a monkey because it's the closest thing to. to a human. Well, that he appears. Right. Yeah, but you can't really go that close to apes. Well, what, do you, what do you mean? What type was it? What, do you just mean let him tell the story. Was it a chimpanzee? I reckon it was a chimp, yeah. Yeah, I don't even know. So it's a chimp. It was okay. a chimp. Yeah, but it doesn't matter, does so it? So he gets pally with him. Right, so he gets pally with well, him. Well, have they gone all the way together? Well, no, I mean, it starts on off- the pool together. starts off just checking each other out and, uh, you know, probably sharing lunch and that together. Yeah. Right? <coughs> anyway, this goes on for a while. Is uh, you know, they, they're getting on well on that. And then after a while, right, the monkey starts sort of imitating him a bit more and sort of walking upright. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. Right? So he thinks, oh, that's a bit weird. <laughs> anyway, they get on really better and what have you. So he thinks he could he could live at home with me. This because yes. we're getting on the storm. Yeah. Right. So he takes him home, and before is you know, is this the it, beginning of Beneath the Planet of the Apes? <laughs> I think it is. I think you've seen this on video. Well, I, I'm worried because he's already <laughs> imitating him, and they're moving in together. I'm thinking it's maybe a bit like single white female. <laughs> <laughs> single white zookeeper. Ah, oh, brilliant. Right, so on. anyway. So, it's moving in and it's getting used to sort of the, the normal human life. It's having a cup of tea in the morning. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> PG tips. As a. <laughs> as a. Uh, it finishes the day off with a. Oh, with a, dear. <laughs> it finishes, it finishes the day off with what? It with does, a, a it does little not brandy. move a piano at one point, <laughs> does it? He finishes the day off with a little brandy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, he pours himself a. Is he wearing a smoking jacket? Yeah, I'll tell you what, Carl. You, you're listen, a maniac. Listen, mate. no, this is, this is why it attracted me. It's amazing, right? <laughs> so, he's having his brandy and that, loving his life. Um, <laughs> next thing you know, he sort of, um, <laughs> I don't know if he loses it or he gets shaved, but the top half of his body is hairless. hairless. Right? Apart from his head. Right? So he's right. got a nice so it's the head. opposite of the kid. No. Yeah. This is what well, I'm that, that would happen. Right. Well, hang on, but so you don't know if he's he he shaved know. or if it's How did it say, uh, then the, the I'll hairless, what, what? I'll bring it in for you, the story, and then you right, can well, see okay, if I've gone wrong. Keep going, keep so going. anyway, so, wow. um. So this is going on and it, 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 he's having a great life. Then the zookeeper starts getting a bit annoyed because he's having a better life than the zookeeper. The zookeeper's in the this zoo. This is such so, rubbish. So the zookeeper's still got to do a day's work. The monkey's at home, he's partying, well, he's got his other Well, he gets to a point when he friend. says there's no point you coming in to the zoo because the whole reason of you being there was because you're being kept there. Right. And he didn't want to bring the memories back so he said, you stay at home. So You are ju you're talking such- Just let him finish. God, I don't know if I can sit here and listen to this drivel. Let me- I, I'm fascinated. It's, it's it nearly over anyway, right? It sounds extraordinary, Carl. So, <laughs> he, he's walking up right, he's having a tea in the morning, finishing the day off with brandy. Um, <laughs> gets a bit out of hand, only tries it on with the zookeeper's wife. <laughs> <laughs> Make him go away, Steve. How does he do that? <laughs> well, because he's around humans a lot, he becomes a bit of a charmer. <laughs> and, uh, but, but, what, but what is it that he could do to seduce her? Pick fleas out of her? He didn't say. He's built. He was built. <laughs> yeah, he was well done. Uh, so what, what about that? Wait, what do you mean, what about it, Carl? It's obviously not true. I don't understand how the I love the fact he becomes a charmer. He's got better taste in brandy. <laughs> exactly. And he, ah, oh, that what is- What was it that he was doing that seduced her? I don't know, I th maybe because he was at home more than the zookeeper was. <laughs> but what would he be doing, <laughs> Carl? <laughs> He's not gonna be talking with her, they're not gonna be playing, like, Trivia Pursuit. Maybe, maybe she liked the silent type. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I, it didn't go into that, it just said it, that's when the trouble started. Go on. Hey, right, go on. Right. <laughs> Is that what Suzanne did when she brought you up? <laughs> <laughs> Talking to the sun. Oasis and Songbird. It's a nice little ditty. It's all right, yeah. Of a Saturday. Yes. Thank you. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. I, I think we should go straight into it, Carl. I think you should, we should, uh, do the competition, the, the, uh, 
there's Carl in the corner. It seems Whatever. a little premature, isn't it? Do you reckon? Yeah, I think Do you reckon so. Do you reckon it's yeah, so good? It's, we it's should, we should tease it out of Well, it's, it's a big, it's a big thing. It's just that I've got absolutely nothing to say. I've Sure. So I haven't really- Well, I mean, like, like, often I know you all have spoken to Carl in the week. This week, for some reason, I've been speaking to him. Oh, right. I spoke briefly to him about Michael Jackson and the documentary. Yeah. Now, of course, that, I thought that was extraordinary. Amazing. And, uh, Amazing I asked Carl's piece opinion. Of work. Yeah. And he didn't mention to me, uh, the fact that Michael Jackson likes to climb up in trees. No. He didn't mention anything about his bizarre relationship with children. He didn't mention anything about his obsessive billionaire spending sprees. Right. He didn't spe mention anything about the, uh, mannequins he has in his thing or the fact that he drives around his, his sort of seven hotel suites in Las Vegas in a little kind of old people's scooter. The first, the only thing of note for Carl was he said to me, did you notice how big his hands are? i tell you what though, I did. What? How are you looking? The man's got like a face that he's had reconstructed. Well, I can't I see him say that, it's libelous. Yeah, but, no, um, he, hasn't, he hasn't. He's got he's an had, he's had two. He's had two face. jobs. Yeah. And but you're looking I, at his hands. But I think it's because you look at him and he looks a bit like, is, is, there's a bit of androgyny there, but it's sort of like a... It is quite a, um, petite sort of old lady's face in a way, but then you see these labourers' <laughs> hands come out. That's always the way with a tranny, isn't it? You know what I mean? What, you can't accuse him of being a tranny? No, he's not. No, I'm, no he's not. What are you saying? <laughs> no, no, he's, he's not. got enough issues, now you're accusing him of being a tranny. I like him. I thought he came out that brilliant. I, I, I thought it was really, I really felt sorry for him. Um, and, uh, no, I think... He cleared up a few things, uh, as far as I'm concerned. I thought it was a fascinating piece of work. But, um, uh, I did like the shopping spree. That was great. Extraordinary. Cause just going around just taste. pointing. I know, it's, it was bad taste, wasn't it? It was like one of those bizarre shops. Yeah. You know what I mean? Those, uh, anything, sort of a gift shop, but they're trying to make it look like men. But if, it, yeah, I mean, and if it he'd, sprayed gold. If he'd been living in a trailer park, he'd have been ordering, you know, one of those, uh, porcelain dolls dressed like a Harley Davidson I know, bike yeah. rider, or, uh, you know, an Elvis commemorative plate. It was the kind of but, billionaire equivalent of that. But the hands were a giveaway. It's the same as those sort of transvestites. Well, what? Like what? What is it about his hands? Well, you know, you know hands? when you get like a cab driver or something, right, and he, he decides to uh, turn transvestite about 60, and he goes on Kilroy. Do you know right. what I mean? That way, he's got a twin set of pearls and he goes, I've never felt so comfortable. But his hands are still big. He's got a little wig and he's got the lipstick on. And he's with his teenage kids who are going, kill me. Do you think but he's been having surgery on his hands to make them larger? Bigger, yeah. Is that why he was wearing that glove? He must be it. Exactly. Because he's, yeah, but, but yeah. I, I think he wants to be a goalkeeper. Right. And they said, well, you, you can't, Michael. You've got a big hand. It would help him climb the trees. It is, it's right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he can play tennis now without a racket. <laughs> yeah. So, so what uh, did you make of it, Carl? Were you intrigued? Um, the Michael Jackson thing. Oh. It's, it's, you know, it was alright. But, um, like that got a load of attention in the press. But the Trisha program got nothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which, uh, I know, was like, that? well, Steve called me up in the week, right? Uh, like 10 o'clock in the morning, I was at work. <coughs> and he goes, uh, you're you watching Trisha. at 10 o'clock. So so think you've been uh, preparing yeah. this show. Most people go to work about 8 or 9. Are you watching Trisha and that? I said, no, what is it? He goes, oh, you'll be loving it, right? Um, Freaks? Was it, f um, uh, help me, my mum's a freak? Mm, Siamese twins. Right. right. So I couldn't watch it, but he said, oh, it might be on again, because they repeat stuff on ITV2. Right. So I, I had my dinner late, right, mm -hmm. instead of having it at like one o'clock like I normally do. Yeah. I had it at like 2.30. Yeah. Sat in the office, put the telly on, ITV2. Um, these Siamese twins. Did it blow your mind? It was amazing. You know, we, we talk about a lot of things on the show quite a lot. The airy kids crop up a lot. <laughs> I was waiting. It's been ten minutes and you yeah. haven't mentioned the airy kid. Right. And, uh, last week we were talking about Siamese twins, weren't yeah. we? So it was, it was weird that this program was on, but it was amazing. I mean, what, what I think, think you can't refer to them as Siamese twins. I think they're known as conjoined twins. Why? I think, I think Siamese is maybe considered derogatory or as an old antiquated phrase. Yeah, right. I think it's because the first famous ones were actually from Siam. Yeah, right. But anyway. and, and, and that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> no, it's so, conjoined, oh. Carl. Yeah. Get the phrase right. But you'd think that if that's happened to you, that wouldn't be that sort of offensive. The names that you must get called. Right. <laughs> you think that's least Siamese worries. twins, I'd say, well, that's, yeah. Now, were you worries. stunned by where they were connected? <laughs> Just live with it, we'd say. Right. Because uh, they were connected, of course, at, at the forehead. Oh. <sighs> sort of, uh, which was quite, quite extraordinary. Well, I, uh, there was one set of Siamese twins, one, one had a job and the other one didn't. <laughs> That's ludicrous. Yeah. <laughs> the other one was unemployed, the other one had a job. <laughs> she had to go to work, she had to get up at six o'clock on a day I'm off. supporting you, literally. <laughs> then, yeah. Then they get done off the social for sort of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cause the other one was signing on. 
<laughs> I, th that wasn't a, a question that Trisha asked. <laughs> Annoyingly, because I know that much of the audience was thinking that. There's a, yeah. there's a few things that didn't crop up. <laughs> what, what? what questions would you have asked of them? Because what things did you feel weren't mentioned? Um, I'd love to just watch Carl watching well, amazing exactly. things. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? It's like like t early learning. Uh, thing. Mouth slightly open. Yeah, mouth slightly open. Slight dribble, <gasps> looking round to see if anyone else has seen Ooh. it. You know, I hate that. Like when it's a cat sees a bird land on the balcony. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> it, 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 it can't believe it's luck. I'd probably say, how do you buy a like a birthday present? <laughs> <laughs> a surprise gift, yeah. Because everything's ruined. Sure. Right? Um, I'd probably ask. Uh, yeah. Well, did you not think it was interesting that one of them had a boyfriend? Well, that was a bit weird, wasn't it? Uh-huh. But, um, what was the other thing that I was thinking when I was watching it? I was thinking if one got into crime and that was sent to prison... Right. Like, ...what would happen? <laughs> How <laughs> would handle that? <laughs> it's brilliant. It is brilliant. If a chimp could talk. And, uh, what was the other one? The other thing was, um, what do they talk about? Because it's not as if you can say, oh... Well, guess what I did today? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so. Got this. In. Well, if you've just tuned in, it's XFM 104.9. You've got that bit right. Ricky Gervais Shoe with me, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. Carl is actually in a little booth. We're not in the studio, you see. We're- this is pre-recorded. We recorded this last week, cos we're away. And it's sort of like the best of- best of the last three weeks, since last time we were away when we put out the best of. Me and Carl went out, right? Um, and, uh, with, um, me and Jane, Carl and Johnny and Gigi, wasn't it? Gigi was Is it important to win? No. Okay. But we're walking down the street. Carl was there, though, and he can back me up on this. Um, we had a curry. We were walking back. And, uh, this little funny homeless fella, didn't he? Mm. He, uh, oh, I've got to tell it before, before I go, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> he, 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 uh, he came up to me, right? And he recognised it. Um, and he came up to me and he went, he went, oh, he said, I've just nicked one of your DVDs from HMV. <laughs> and he shook my hand. He was so happy with it. And I went, right, excellent. He went, all I do is I just swing the bag over the top. Like that, when, <laughs> when I'm going out. And he had a bag full of DVDs, didn't he? And what? he was, he was so pleased to tell me that he'd <laughs> stolen. That great. He said, that, he said they're going like hot cakes. Yeah, he said they're going like, of course they are! Yeah, you're <laughs> nicking them. Yeah. I know. We get paid yeah. for them though, don't we? So we- not the stolen ones. Don't we? No. What do you mean? Did you sign them for him? <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you idiot. <laughs> what, so, um, he just nicked five- Yeah. Well, yeah. And you say he was homeless, was he? Well, I- I- he- don't know, maybe. No. Surely, how would he have seen the show? He what? just walked past Curry's one, one, one Dixon's. morning. Dixon's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the telly idea. Seen a trailer for it, thought, hmm, interesting. I don't know if he was homeless. I didn't- I didn't go into his home sure. life. He shook his hand, though, and- But he's- he, he made Carl look smart, do you know what I mean? Mm. Mm. So, uh, yeah. how does he sell them? Where does he sell them? Does he go up to people and go, do you want an office DVD? They're not nicked. <laughs> yeah. Four quid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Are these stolen? No. No, 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 no. They've still got the tags on them. Well, yeah. it's like those people who, um, you're, you're those cab drivers that you'll meet at sort of three in the morning who've just got a car. Yeah. And just went out with a car. Yeah. And just, I'll, I'll, I'll pick people up and charge them. Yeah. I got in one once, I said to him, uh, the guy just pulled up, I said, uh, he said, I was in like, uh, East London, I'm going back to, uh, North London. I said, uh, yeah, going to, uh, Swiss Cottage. He went, sure, hop in. <laughs> we set off. He went, do you know the way? <laughs> I said, well, not really, no. I, th I thought you'd know the way. You're in a cabbie, aren't you? He went, no, I don't really know the way there. I, don't. I, said, I said, have you got an A to Z? He went, no. I thought, well, if you're gonna go out just on the, you know, just winging it as a cab driver, yeah. two things, take a map and a torch. He didn't have yeah. either. He said, uh, well, I'll probably get to Camden. I said, right, I'll direct you from there. Drove on for about five minutes, making conversation. About five minutes later, he went, do you know the way to Camden? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you knew the way to Camden. I don't really know the way. I thought you <laughs> Oh. It was loot. I mean, Let I, me out. You know, Four yeah, quid. Exactly. <laughs> and that's- I, I can't- I don't know who's got that sort of time on their hands that they just think, it's three in the morning, I'm, I'm at a loose end. Mm. I think I'll go out doing a bit of cabbing. Wow. Yeah. Because your dad was a cabbie, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, yeah. Couldn't stand it, but it's- it's good money. He was a prof- he wasn't like a chancer, though. Black what cow, was- black what was he- what was he doing when he put that little Forrest Gump in a- in a weedy bin? That was, uh, that was part of the cab company thing. They had to do, like, a charity event once a year, and he did it one year. Never asked him again. Tell us the story again, I, I know you no, told No, I'd before. rather not, cos- Why? We got, cos we got a few, sort of, uh, complaints about it. Why? Why do you get complaints about it? Because- 
because he put a kid in a bin and it's not the thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> so. But we could use it as a sort of sobering lesson for people. <laughs> yeah. Tell it like a, tell it like a, you know, don't, yeah. you shouldn't do it. No, it's, it's uh, yeah, but that's how I did it last time, but people still didn't like it. All the stuff I tell you, I don't, you know, we don't take the mickey out of people on purpose. No. We, it's real life, innit? And mm. that goes on in life. Yeah. My dad I, was saying that in hospital, though. Do you know how he was in hospital? Yeah. You know, he did some jokes about old people and that. And he said, at the end of the day, if something makes you laugh, it's funny. Mm. And if it makes you laugh, you can't help laughing, can you? Do you True know what I mean? Enough. So, what are you meant to do? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. laughing's good for you. Yeah. So, even But being laughed at isn't as good for you, is it? No, but there's probably more people laughing at one person, so if you balance it out, <laughs> there's only one person who's upset and there's a bunch of people laughing. <laughs> so, it's, it's- That's genius! Give me an example of that, give me an example. Well, for instance, Carl Pilkington as he talks and the people listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, give me an example of like, so, it's, uh, it, you know. I can't, well, I can't because again, that's what I'm saying, I can't tell you the story. Yeah. Because there might be someone out there who- this person might even be listening and think, I forgot about that and you brought it all back to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I prefer to leave it, but I think people know- Why did he put him in the bin in the first place? Because he was getting out of hand. What was he doing though? You see, I can't explain- He can! Don't be silly! I prefer to- to leave it, honestly. What, what, what was he doing? Was he annoying him? He was annoying me dad and the other people in the cab. Right. And he thought, how can I deal with this before it gets too out of hand? Yeah. He pulled over and put the lad in a wheelie bin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pass. So we'll, we'll leave that. <laughs> <laughs> Just gone one o'clock, Steve, mm -hmm. if I'm very much mistaken. But we're not here no. as such. We're away again, gallivanting <laughs> around. Okay. Uh, um, we've got to do the special sort of best of again. Okay. Which we did a few weeks ago. So this is the best of the last three weeks. <laughs> um, which I think is, I mean, I think it's the best three weeks we've ever had. <laughs> but I'd like it condensed into two hours. Yeah. Yeah, um, some great music as well in there. Yeah, there'd be some great music, uh, uh interspersed with, with fine chat that you've already heard. <laughs> yeah. Well, except this bit, this bit's new. We've actually, uh, out of the kindness of our heart, we've come in, um, we've come in last week. Yeah, yeah. And we've done a few clips, just cause we felt a bit guilty about shooting off yeah. and leaving. I mean, I, even now, having heard this link, I'm beginning to wonder if it was worth our time. Oh, dear. You know, I've, I've said in the past to you, Rick, that my grandparents, so I love them dearly, but it's like, for the last thirty years, they've been waiting to die. I know, It's yeah. like they just sort of, it's like, you know, the novelty wore off of life. You know, <laughs> life like, in the fifties. Yeah, they got kind of bored of it. Life, yeah, <laughs> in the forties, it was brilliant, all sat around the old Joanna's, the bombs <laughs> yeah. fell, singing, they loved that. In the fifties, you know, that was great as well, because that was the post-war years, it was, you know, it was a bit tight in the pocket, but it was alright, everyone pulled together, and then the sixties came along, all the crazy music, the let's, funny hair. Let's stay in bed. They, they, exactly, and they basically stayed in bed. And uh, it was one Christmas when um, my, my my grandmother said to my dad, uh, "What do you like for Christmas? What, what do you fancy for Christmas?" And uh, this must have been, well, I don't know, twenty years ago. She said, uh, "What do you uh, what do you fancy for Christmas, Ron?" And he went, "Well, you know, I could do with a nice big kind of warm winter overcoat." She said, "Don't worry about that. Said, don't worry about that because your father will be dead soon. It's what you can have his." Meaning my granddad. Well, to be honest with you, my father's still waiting. <laughs> Which is good news. Good news for my grandfather. <laughs> Less good news for he's my dad. He's freezing. He's freezing. He's freezing. Oh, he phones out. How is he today? He's yeah. fine. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, I'm freezing. It is very, such a weird uh, mindset that I think it's that to me is what sums up people from that older generation, the forties and fifties. And it seems to me that you've got that kind of mindset. It's like you were born in the thirties. And whenever you talk of your childhood, it's like you had like a big I potato to take well, to I school. Uh, and no, a poop I, and a stick. Is a Christmas the gift. other thing is, I think that it, 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 that sort of generation, it, it seems that the man is dependent on the. Woman, mm. as a total dependent. Oh, absolutely. If, yeah. if she dies, he's done. Yes, he's yes. done for. It yeah. it just pine away. If he dies, she's got thirty years of pottering. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and going yeah. to like you know uh, the, the youth club and the yeah, church. I know what you mean, yeah. It, it's sort of like that. It's. It, it was it's sad, of course it's sad for them, but it's so not the end of their life. No, sure. And it sort of is the other way around. I don't I know, know why that mean. is. Yeah. It's terrible. That's a little melancholy thought for uh, I know, Christmas I've really time. brought it, you brought it down, you've brought it down, I've brought it down. This isn't a nice show at all, this is terrible. Well, I We're gonna have really people make just it killing themselves. Uh, well, what? Well, I, d I didn't really want to make it a Christmassy type show, cause I don't- you don't really like it. Oh, he's done it again. <laughs> well, he did Christmas once, didn't like it. No, my dad always- Oh, right, steady on. Dad said Christmas morning was for like, you know, for me. So he used to stay in bed. Mm. So he, ne he never- <laughs> That's brilliant. That's a great thing to say, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Christmas morning's for you. Run wild. Do what you want. Just yeah, don't so, follow so me. So I'm going to Honolulu for two <laughs> weeks. 
<laughs> That's great. Dad, it's Christmas. Do I have to do anything? No. So my mum used to get up because she used to like to see my face light up, you know, when, when I opened the presents. And then, uh. <laughs> to give fireworks. And then, uh. <laughs> then I'd have to go to my bedroom from about six o'clock onwards because, like, my mum and dad were into having big Christmas parties and I wasn't, like, old enough to go. Right. So they'd say, right, you know, you've had your fun there, you go up to your bedroom, stay in there. <laughs> and really? Yeah, I remember one year, right, I got got a train set, that's what I wanted. Yeah. Right? It's brilliant. <laughs> uh, playing with it all day. I thought, I don't mind about the party, I'm happy staying up here playing with this. Brother comes in, he's had a few, right, he's going, yeah, give us a go on your How train set. How old is he? He's, he's a bit older than me, so he, he might have been like, uh, let's see. Well, let, he, let he him be 18. Like, yeah, probably about 18, 19, and something like that. I was, well, I had a train set, so, I don't know, about- Fourteen. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Right, so, uh, so I'm playing on that, loving it and stuff, and then he comes in and goes, oh, gives a go. He turns the transformer up to, like, fourteen. He went really fast for about five seconds, broke it, and then he went back downstairs. Wow. So Christmas, I ain't even got to Sounds Christmas Sounds like day. the, uh, Conservative government with, uh, British Rail. Satire, <laughs> <is>. Sat <laughs> Rick, well, I just thought that there's sat satire. It's if there's saying, any satirical if there's shows this in or it doesn't, work, it doesn't work in any way, because there's, 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 the analogy falls down, no, apart from there being a train. Think it through, though, British Rail was trains. <laughs> yeah. And the government broke the trains in many ways. Well, they didn't break them, like, not officially breaking them, but they kind oh, of- yeah. Yeah, it of, does work, it's perfect. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty pleased with that. And I can't, and, and no one's asked him to be on Have I Got News For You. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Cause it, it is strange that, with, <laughs> yeah. when you've got a satirical mind that that's, that's as quick as that. Yeah. All and right. it's broke your little train set, so what did you do? I just like watched telly and had some sausages. <laughs> I bet you were happy with that though, weren't you? Uh, it's a bit annoying though, isn't it, when your main present of the year has been broke. And, and did, then, it, uh, did it ever get it fixed? No, that was it. That was it. Put away. I'm intrigued why your parents wouldn't let you come and join in the festive fun. Was because it like really debauched down there? Was it like eggnog no, everywhere? Well no, no like but I mean that's fair enough. Six seems a little bit early, but I just think, you know, if you're your kid, you, you, you know, he had his fun, put him to bed, put him to bed at eight, maybe. <laughs> and he was so on Christmas Day, I thought that was a day for family. Well, not if there's a party going on. I well, don't have the party on the Christmas Day, Well, that's, point. that's, that's another option. Yeah. yeah. Your parents are weird, aren't they? A strange breed. Well, and I think that was the year, right? I, uh, <laughs> you're talking about buying presents and stuff. I think I did treat my mum to I didn't buy my dad anything. I think that was, like, when I got a bit older, he used to get me dad something, because he wasn't that bothered anyway. No. Mm. So, uh, got me mum, uh, it was a cheap shop. Right. Of course. Uh. Thank God for that. Called Snips. Right? <laughs> so I went in there and I thought, let's see what I can get her. And remember, uh, Victoria Plum? I don't think so. Well, it's like a, a fairy character. Right. Right. I mean, mum's into gnomes <laughs> and stuff, right? So <laughs> I thought, right. She must be pleased with you then. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, so, Victoria uh, Plum. I was thinking, is that one of the neighbours? Is it? Is it like a brandy yeah, do liqueur? Do you remember Victoria Plum? Victoria Plum. Victoria Plum. Yeah, it's like a little fictional sort of character. Right? Okay. Okay. So, uh, so I saw it. I thought, yeah, she'll love that. Right. So I did my paper round, saved up for two weeks. Right. Aww. Got that sorted. Went to Snips. Bought the uh, Victoria Plum. Next day, I'm in. I'm in town with her. Right. So I think, ah, oh, I know what I'll do. I said, come, come in here a minute. Right. Uh, so we go in and we're looking around and I tested her, right? I went, look at that there, that's all right, isn't it? And she goes, oh, it's bloody awful. <laughs> oh, Carl. <laughs> oh, Carl. I just, I, I, oh, God. So then Christmas Day comes I said, oh. don't bother opening it. She said, no, no, why? Said, oh, no, why don't you still give it to her? So, well, it's too late, I'd already bought it. Oh, Carl. So she opened it and I was like, <sighs> and she said, oh, that's nice. I said, why are you saying that? I said, the other day, he said, it's bloody awful. She said, oh no, I thought you were pointing at something else. Brilliant. Oh no! So that's why I don't get anyone anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Play record! Oh God! Oh! <laughs> oh no! Gonna put my foot in a pistol! <laughs> XFM 104.9, we're not here. Um, this next clip is one of my favourite clips. Uh, look, it needs no introduction. Here it is. Something, uh, <laughs> something else we're giving away. Go on. Um, The Shining. <laughs> it's just more throwing away, isn't it? Like, once again, is it on video? Once again, it's on VHS. Just cos you buy it out of your own money, Carl, stop being so mean. And I wanna watch it tonight, cos it's one of those films that, um... <laughs> so you're, you're gonna watch this video, <laughs> and then you're gonna send it to someone as a prize? Yeah, it's one of them th films that <laughs> I'm so, gonna... So, wait, you, you just said yes to that without <laughs> blinking? Oh, well, yeah. 
You don't think, like, Les Dennis doesn't have a quick go in the car <laughs> on Family <laughs> Fortune before he gives it away? <laughs> <laughs> it costs five ninety nine. Jim Bowen has a go at those his nerd towel racks. <laughs> it costs five ninety nine, Carl. Okay, this is uh, Carl uh, in in the classic The Shining. And what's the question? Well, we might ask that afterwards. Okay then. Still, uh, still trying to write the uh, the book then. No. Yes. Good. Funny, someone uh, told me the other day, weird thing about a typewriter, the top row of letters, the longest word you can write is typewriter. I'll just show you. Just That's weird, isn't it? It's just the typewriter being, you're not, you're not in the mood, are you? you're just going to, you're in one of those grouchy moods again, like you get into when you're writing. You're not. Being grouchy, I just want to finish my work. Yeah, it's just, just she being a bit funny, a bit offhand than that. <coughs> Let me explain something to you. Go on. Whenever you come in here and interrupt me, you're breaking my concentration. You're distracting me, and it will then take me time to get back to where I was. Understand? Yeah, but I, I just was coming in to try and cheer you up. You know, if you. I mean, I, I'm full of ideas as well, you know, if you're having a problem coming up with stuff. Got loads of stuff, loads of ideas you could write about. The other day I read about this airy Chinese kid. <clears throat> what do you want me to do about it? No, it's just that it, it could make a, a good book. Do you know what I mean? Sort of following round. Uh, That's swell. Well, I, I'd buy it. You know. But if you don't want to know, we'll have to... Don't bother doing it, but... Do you know what I mean? I just... Airy Chinese kid. It's, it's weird because they're not normally that airy over there. Yeah, this kid caked in it. But if you don't care... I wouldn't touch one hair on his goddamn little head. You don't have to touch any hair on his head. Like I say, he's covered. Leave the head alone if you want. Touch his hands. He's, he's totally covered in it, but... It, it, I love the little son of a bitch. Well, don't go that far. <laughs> you haven't met him, but I can sort it I'd out. I'd do anything for him. I don't think you'd expect that much, just take him to the barbers three or four times a week. You know, he's a good good little kid. In fact, I'll do it. I think I'll write a book on him. Yeah? Now, do you think you can handle that? Yeah. You're not too busy, are you? Well, I, yeah, I'm pretty busy. I've got to sort out some uh, some monkey facts for the show this Saturday, but I, I reckon I can still... Why don't you start right now and get out of here? Alright. I will. You're gonna be like that. Couldn't borrow a pen, could I? See you later. There you Haunting. go. Haunting stuff there. Carl Pilkerton in The Shining. You know in the film Jack Nicholson goes crazy because the suggestion is he's maybe possessed by demons that maybe uh, are in the in the hotel. But you know, if I was stranded in a desolate hotel, removed from all human contact with Carl, I'd go mental with an axe <laughs> without being possessed by demons. <laughs> <laughs> That's more chilling to me, trying to get some work done and you keep wandering in. I'm trying to get Carl to spend a couple of days in the caravan with me. <laughs> just for the hell of it. And he, he, was, he won't. I've offered him money, won't I? I, I think it'd be a great laugh, wouldn't it, Carl? Oh yeah, great. That would be terrifying. No, I want to film it. I just want to film you. it. Like a little video diary. There's Carl there, he's just waking up. Well, if I was stranded in there, that would be like being- I may as well be with Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees. <laughs> it, that's- that's more scary. The thing the is, two of you. Ricky doesn't mess you about as much as he messes me about. No, you see, you've given him an inch. You've given him an inch and he's taken a yard. 12.30 you got in today. In the 30 minutes between 12.30 and 1. The old bin lid on the head. He wanted to do that again. <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> squeezing my head, think he had a go at. And a karate chop on the back of the neck. Yeah. All in 30 minutes. Yeah. Who else can say that? <laughs> Who else can say that? Who else can say that? XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais show with uh, Steve Merchant, hello there. Good. And um, we're not here this week, we're off jetting around the world, so we've pre-recorded these links. Uh, the time is currently somewhere between one and three o'clock. So uh, a time check there from Steve Merchant. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, and uh, oh, what, what about this weather? Um, isn't it 
Warm. Stroke. Edit that, Carl. Cold. Okay, whichever one. Mm. Um, I'm pleased to see that the congestion charge has had some considerable effect. Had no effect. So just, yeah. Um, oh, wasn't that great on telly last night, the film? <laughs> yeah. I particularly enjoyed last night's EastEnders, Coronation Street, Brookside. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> Child of mine. <laughs> On oh, XFM 104.9. I enjoyed that. Yeah. That yeah. was good. It rocks. It I, rocks hope, I hope the audience was playing it loud like us. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ricky Gervais, <sighs> Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, look at him yawning. How rude is that? Carl, what's wrong with you, man? Have you been up late? A little bit. <laughs> Girlfriend was away, wasn't she, yesterday? Yeah, I always have a problem with that. I always have a... Because you don't go to bed, do you, early? Do you know what I mean? You what? sort of think. I, I just always find mm. that thing that if you know you're used to living with someone, yeah, one of you will go. Well, let's go to bed. Then you'll go. All right. Um, but when you're on your own, you go. Oh, you just forget to go to bed. I just to stay up. Okay, I'll stop. Stop eating now, Carl. You've had all the food. That's just the plate. All right. Okay. Yeah. No, I just I, I stayed up and watched. Um, there was a thing on about Dracula. <laughs> right. <laughs> what Dracula? And I found a flaw in it. Go on. Uh, not not the fact that is the living dead and is. <laughs> No. Nope. drinks blood to stay alive and he doesn't reflect and he can in turn mirrors. Into a bat. Well, and you can- go on. The mirror thing, he can't look in mirrors. Can he? Well he can look in mirrors but he can't see himself in a mirror. Yeah. Right, well it still doesn't work. Go, go on. on. Go it on. doesn't work at all, Carl. It doesn't work go anyway. Come on. No. Well. Centre parting's always really neat. His centre parting's always really <laughs> neat. How does he do it if he can't look in the mirror? <laughs> Bl blood on the floor or something it was called. Rubbish. <laughs> I love the flaw in the Dracula film is that his centre farting's too neat. How did he do it without a mirror? Oh. Was it a documentary about Dracula? No, yeah. there was the real Dracula. The real Dracula. <laughs> yeah, the real yeah. Dracula. The it's true just story. a film. It had blood on the floor or something. It's called. Yeah. It's rubbish. Yeah. We had a little lunch yesterday, didn't we? We did indeed. That was a nightmare. Yeah. I hate going out with you two. I, I was explaining to Carl, right? I, I like to excite Carl's imagination, right? And uh, um, if it involves. Chimps or monkeys, all the better. Um, brains he likes, parts of the body, deformity. You know, I know, I know where to, you know, what buttons to push. And, um, I told him about this thing, I don't know if, uh, uh any of you out there, um, know about this. Um, but there's, there's an experiment they did in the, in the 50s, um, a, uh, a clinical psychology experiment where, uh, there's your two hemispheres of the brain, okay, they're joined by a thing called the corpus callosum, right, which is a, just a little f flap of skin, like a little scartly that joins your two hemispheres. And what they did, they cut that in half, and they thought it was a cure for schizophrenia, but what it turned out to be, or epilepsy, I think, I can't remember, um, uh, was that your two sides of your brains didn't function together. You couldn't get information. I was telling Carl all this thing, and I, one of the things I told him was that they did it on a monkey, and it fought itself over a nut, like its right arm was connected, you know, by its left lobe of the brain, and it was fighting over itself. And Carl went instead of like thinking this is amazing experiment, he went, "Would it would it have been happy if you'd given it two nuts?" <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, you started off by explaining, and I remember you mentioned because I, I was watching the two of you as you were describing it to me. You said, "Of course, one side of the brain deals with uh, symbolism," and as you said the word symbolism, I noticed Carl drift away from looking at you, <laughs> pick up his mobile phone, <laughs> and start pressing buttons randomly. <laughs> And I, I thought it was the word symbolism that got him. And I noticed it took you just a moment longer. And I think the first thing you said was, "When did I lose you?" Yeah, I knew I'd lost him. It's extraordinary, and he doesn't even try I to think disguise it. I said it. Nomenclature at one point as well, right? Yeah. And I, I knew I was dicing with death there. Yeah. But yeah. um, uh, did, but I told you, you tried to look it up, didn't you, on the on the web? You didn't find anything about yeah, it. The yeah? spelling, the spelling of it's what? What is it again? What's the word? Corpus callosum. Yeah. I was, I was, I couldn't put- couldn't do it. Couldn't no, put, yeah. don't bother. Give up. Don't bother. Give up. Um, so any, if anyone knows any interesting facts about that, that, uh, I don't but yours hasn't been cut in half, has <laughs> it, Carl? That would, again, might explain something. I'll tell you what we will be talking about later. I don't know if you're- if you're sort of aware of them, Steve. Go on. Bonobos. Oh, I, told I don't know about, much about bonobos. I told him about them. Um, he was looking for stuff. I said, put in bonobo. He was having no luck with chimp. Um, and they're, uh, they're a, they're a form of chimpanzee, but, um, they're- they're even closer to us. Evolutionally speaking, they've got their social- um, groups are more like ours, they're, they're more intelligent. And he was loving it, weren't you? So is it, is it human bonobo Carl? <laughs> is yeah, that how it works yeah, on the yeah. evolutionary no, ladder? chimp Carl. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> talking about him, so we're yeah. talking about bonobos, you're excited about that? Yeah, That's yeah. coming up in, uh, monkey news? Uh, no, I think it's a bit of a monkey bonus. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, 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 that was great. That was very, very funny. Indeed. What a wonderful clip that was. I enjoyed Do you it. remember that? I, yeah. yeah. Well, it was in a, couple, a few weeks ago, wasn't it, really? I mean, I think it was last week. We'd have to have very, very bad memories mm. not to remember that mm. hilarious clip. I'd like to hear that again maybe in a couple of weeks' time when I'm away. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I, it's, it's embarrassing, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And we, you know, but the, you know, the good thing is, uh, on telly, I feel a bit guilty about putting out shoddy rubbish because I'm getting paid an awful lot. <laughs> yes. But here, you know, I, I don't give a sh. They can bleep that. They will do. They will do. <laughs> Peter David Bowie. Uh, when's that ever at anyone, Steve? Never. Lady Stardust off Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkington is in the middle of educating me. Colon, then. Educate me. Did I tell you the time when, uh, <laughs> the doctor said, uh, I was gonna die? All right, keep talking. Right. Ages ago, um, must have been about 15, right? And, uh, at lunchtime there was this we used to have a choice of stuff to do at lunchtime, right? We used to have, um, like a, uh, like a burger place that had an arcade machine in it, right? So we used to go there and play on that and have a burger. Or there was this baker's, right, that my mum worked at and, uh, did great cakes and stuff, right? So, um, she used to, like, bring some home and that, but she couldn't always bring them home every night because, you know, they'd, they'd cost money and she used to get them for free. And they used to say they'd rather chuck them away than give them to the staff because there's a chance that the cream might be off. Right. Right, so they used to chuck them round the back. So I used to go round the back with my mate and eat a load. Brilliant. Yeah. Scab- yeah. Eating out of bins. <laughs> no, it was really- it wasn't out of bins, they were still in trays but they just stacked them up near the bins, right? So this got out, I mean it used to be a chocker. Now, once the school found out, everybody used to go there and it'd be like, well, have a cake. <laughs> the headmaster crumbled <laughs> yeah. fighting the kids off. Right, so <laughs> I'd have, like, uh, you know, you'd just eat, I don't know, six jam donuts or something, and then you'd spend your dinner money on the arcade machine. Brilliant. Right? So it was a good, good afternoon, really, right? So you'd do that, and this one day I must have had six or seven uh, jam donuts, a few Congress tarts. Uh, <laughs> Start. Just, I love them. It's me. F- I can't get them in London, right? So I'd have some of them. And if anyone can get a Congress tart um, for Carl in London, please let him know. So anyway, this day that that was just a normal day. Do you know what I mean? You'd once, yeah. twice a week, you'd have a load of cake in your life. Yeah, yeah a so normal anyway. day in your life. Uh, were, were the frog boys there with the with the <laughs> webbed hands and the big heads so, and the horse in the city? Uh, yeah. But the day after one of these days, I had really bad cramp in my belly. Right? Okay. I was like in agony, could yeah. hardly walk. So I said to my mum, "Ha, oh. <laughs> could hardly stagger to the free cake." <laughs> <laughs> so. um I was in absolute agony. I said, I think, I don't like doctors, but you'll have to get a doctor in because I don't know what it is. I can't walk. He gets the doctor around. Uh, I won't say his name, but he said, uh, he said, well, doesn't look like he's got long left. Blimey. So I was a bit like, hang on a minute, I've only had a few cream donuts. Yeah. My man was panicking. Sure. He went. My dad came in from work. She said, oh, something's really bad with Carl. I think it's serious. It's, you know, the doctor's only ain't got long left. So he said, what? He said that and just left. So she said, yeah. He said, oh, I'll have to call him then. So he called him up, said, uh, what's all this about, you know, Carl hasn't got long left, how long's he got? So he goes, oh, I was only messing. He's just got, he's just had some bad cream. Can you believe that? <laughs> well, the thing is, Carl, I like the fact your mum didn't ask any questions. I know. <laughs> she didn't yeah, go into detail. Know, know, no, well, I, can I, you I, explain I, more, Doctor? No, I got a shoe off. I, no, but uh, she doesn't. She I, doesn't no, like no, I'm, you know, I don't want to diss you or your family, but I imagine if I was there, I'd have known the Doctor was joking. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I, 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 I sound very arrogant there, but I imagine he went, what's he been doing? Yeah, I had about six cream grounds. Oh, right. Oh, wow. Uh, he hasn't got long to live then. I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think the Doctor did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like the idea your mum just let him go. Yeah. Terrified, thinking, well, yeah. I'm not going to probe him. He sees that's it then. Dad comes in. Hi, honey, I'm home. Anything happened? Uh, the doctor said Carl's going to die and then left. <laughs> Did he? I'll call him. <laughs> but anyway, that's why uh, these sort of things fascinate me. So right. we'll move on to this next one, right, which is brilliant. Go Dead on, short story. So, right, uh, old woman, about 70 years old, yeah. 
Uh, she's normally fit and healthy and stuff, nothing wrong with her, she's having a good life. And, uh, one day, she goes for a check to the doctors, yeah. just to check herself out, cause she's yeah. getting on a bit. Yeah. Uh, says, take your clothes off and that. So, she does. And, uh, checks her out, says, yeah, you're looking good, you're looking good. Uh, turn round. Uh, he said, oh God. He says, you got a, a tumour on your buttock. Right? So she goes, oh. What, can you do anything to sort it out? So they go, yeah, 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 we could book you in for an operation, it's best if we remove this. Books are in for an operation, operation day comes, strip her down and that, they're all stood round, the doctors, start to operate, it only turns out it's a pork chop that she sat on five years earlier and it had stuck to her buttock. Right, Carl. <laughs> I right, can forward you. I'm, I'm, I'm honest. Not, right. I'm, no, I'm, listen. Okay, no, let serious. Me, okay, Carl. I'm telling you now. I'm leaving. I'm no. never. I'm never doing this show again. No, I'm serious. Honestly, You're talking, I, I, I've never had any such. But what do you mean? You couldn't believe it? No. When I read it, I said, "I've got to tell Ricky this that this woman had a pork chop stuck to her ass for five years." You mental case. <laughs> of course she didn't. Is a blinding record, and before that, Rick, what do you make of those adverts? They were great, weren't they? I like them. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to buy all them products on the way home. And that's endorsed by Ricky Gervais. He's won awards. Yeah, Rick, do you remember this? This was a hilarious. No, one. no, you remember this when you hear it. Uh, it was when Carl said something that was basic. Well, I think for a lot of people, it sounded like a lot of old bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> what have we got now? Right, so we, we look into animals that we get rid of. I've spoken to someone about snails. I've spoke to someone about jellyfish, and that, and. Uh, Looking at cockroaches today. She is an expert, she's just not, not just some random person. No, she works in a museum, where, a good museum, I said I'd give it a plug. It's a one near Knightsbridge, it's got dinosaurs and that in it, it's worth seeing. Well, and that's a history museum. Yeah. So, uh... It's <laughs> <laughs> not <I'm> sure. He's <laughs> <laughs> not sure. <laughs> this is Go what on. happened. <laughs> Now, what I'll do, I'll tell you as much as, as I know, and then you can fill me in if I'm right or wrong, and then at the end of it we'll get to the bottom of whether we need them or not. Okay. Alright, so, uh, first of all, uh, the first thing that, that, I, that I found out is that, um, that they have 18 knees. Uh, that's not exactly possible. They're insects, so they have six legs. Yeah. And a knee is usually the junction between femur and tibia, that sort of classic human knee and every other animal knee, so with six legs you can only have six knees. Uh, could somebody sort of got mistaken for seeing one that was a bit double jointed? Cover I, I think you're grasping at straws or something. Alright, well, uh, well, we might have to come back to that one then. Okay. Um, they can hold the breath for 40 minutes. Well, they don't do that. Because they don't breathe in the same way as us. They breathe through little spiracles, holes down the, the side of the body, so... Um, no, if they're not a very apt simile because the, the method of breathing is so different. What do you mean? Because insects have a, a totally different system. They don't have lungs in the way that we do, and just breathing through one part of the body. They're, they're actually breathing through every segment of the body all of the time. So even though they've got the mouth shut, they might be able their to slide. Nothing to do with breathing. So Only just feeding. So you see, maybe that's where someone's gone wrong. Someone's got hold of one and sort of taped its mouth up or something, and so got bored after forty <laughs> minutes and said, "Well, we'll call it right." That's a unkind thing to do to an insect, even to a cockroach. Yeah, but it's all. You can't do that. Yeah, but. No, pretty unkind thing to do anything to anything, even a cockroach. Something else I found out. They can live for a week without an head. Well, that's true if they don't beat to death in the process. But the weird thing is, when I told you that they had 18 knees, you seemed a bit sort of, like, don't don't talk ridiculous. But yeah. then we're talking about an animal that can live without an head. Ah. Uh, so, so there's a little bit of truth in that one, yeah? Yes. Why, when it was invented, has it got that facility? Say if someone said to humans, we could do that with humans, and, you know, if you lose your head in some accident, it gives you a bit of time to sort of go back to your, f to your family and maybe write them, write them a note. You won't be able to have a chat, but write them a note saying, it was my own fault, and, uh, it was nice knowing you. Oh, well, 
that would be a useful facility, I agree. But cockroaches are great survivors. I mean, they've been around for over 300 million years. They're one of the most primitive insects. Right. Well, I've also, um, is it true that they do a lot of resting? Apparently they can sort of rest for 75% of the time. Rest? Yeah, they just, just sit about doing nothing. It's probably true of a, a vast proportion of, of the world's fauna. Well, I mean, maybe maybe the 25% uh, percent that they are working, they're really giving it some, so and it might make up... And they're probably searching out food, and, uh, yeah, they can slow down considerably. You can chill insects in the fridge, and they'll become very, very quiet. You might think they're dead, but Yeah, but I'm sure, you know, if, if we were sat in a fridge, we, you know, we'd go a bit quiet, wouldn't we, you know? Uh, well, uh, you might not know much about it, of course. Yeah, but... I'm not quite reading the, the right sources. Well, I've been using the internet. I'm sure there are many useful sources that you could find there, but some of those seem to have been a little um, misleading to you. So, so you don't agree with with a lot of what I've told you there? No. So cockroaches, can we get rid of them? No. So we're keeping them then? I would say so, yes. <laughs> I think we should get her on more often because she sounds like she'd be a bit of an ally, really. Because she knew immediately that you were talking nonsense. She even said, I think you should be more concerned about your sources, which I've been trying to tell you for a year, right? The fact, I mean, I mean, 18 knees, where did you get that from? It was, uh, it was on the uh, internet. Uh, they can hold their breath for 40 minutes. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what, I don't know what you read and take on. Mad world, don't it? Well, if you've just tuned in, it's XFM 104.9. You've got that bit right. Ricky Gervais show with me, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. Carl is actually in a little booth. We're not in the studio, see, we're, this is pre-recorded, we recorded this last week, because we're away, and it's sort of like the best of, best of the last three weeks, since last time we were away, when we put out the best of. Okay, what's the next yeah. one? What's the ne educating well, Ricky? I don't know, uh, see, like I say, I was lo looking around, and there's stuff that is interesting, right? I was looking on the web, But there's no point. Well, it's just that I found one about, uh um, What's the point? About a lad who, uh, eight years old, yeah. but he's still breastfed. <laughs> now, I don't know if you can get anything out of that. <laughs> Is that what his mum said? <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you mean, I don't know if I can get anything out of that? You don't need to. No, it's, it's just that, you know- Where did you read that? That was on the internet. Oh. oh! Well, yeah. Um, You're always unspe unspecific when you mention it. It's just it was on the internet. Well, yeah. I'm trying to think what I put in. I think I put in Y to see if I'd confuse a computer. Ah! <laughs> 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 Go! Then, you are... No, I did, I did it, a, no honestly. I, I did a search, put in Y, and I ca he came <laughs> up with funny things that, like, why d is this person doing that? Why is that? And it had a picture of this eight-year-old lad, sort of, you know, <laughs> on his mum's nipple. And, um, it was saying, you know, oh, is, is, is this healthy? <laughs> Ooh. Mm. You sure that wasn't asking you that question? <laughs> uh, what, are you, I put in why? <laughs> Just to confuse, confuse the, the computer. computer. <laughs> like, the people go, what do you mean? Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Oh, look, but, yeah. Uh, Last week, I, I was walking, um, uh, home with him and I went, uh, I got a, he was saying something stupid and I went, I've got a competition for next week, let's do a phone in and it's called Carl Pilkington, genius or fool, Yeah, right? And he went, no, no. I went, why not? He went, well, uh, it'd be confusing because they say there's no difference between genius and being a fool. <laughs> Do though, don't they? No, that's, that, no, no, that? but it, it's rubbish and people say there's a fine line between madness and genius and, oh. you know, it's a ridiculous soundbite. Uh, they don't say there's a fine line between a genius and an idiot. Well, the people who do are idiots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what, what would you do there though, just to sort of wrap that little thing up, what would you do? That lad loves his mum's, his mum's milk. What are you what are you asking me to come up with? <laughs> no, I'm just- A title <laughs> for the, the story- No, 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 it's what? just, it's just what would you do? 
Right. What do you mean, what would I do? Well, it's causing a bit of a problem in the area. Right. What area? In in America, I think it was. Oh, America, a problem, are they? George Bush is worried about this kid well, who's no, breastfeeding right, at eight. Imagine it like this. Right. right. Mm -hmm. So, Carl, what are you asking me about this spurious story you saw on the internet? I saw on the internet this yeah. eight-year-old lad, he likes his mum's milk, yeah. and he's saying, is this right? Should it no, be No, it's not. On? But what, 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 <laughs> what do you want Ricky to do about it? It's not his responsibility. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but, but the little town that he lives in, they're all yeah. causing an uproar, right? <laughs> Going, this isn't right, you know, no. I can't let my kid play out in case he's in the garden with his mum getting a bit hungry, right? Yeah. So, oh God. what should they do? Because his mum's saying, well, he likes it. Yeah. And he, you know, what, so what do you do? I don't know the laws. No, but I'm not asking you to sort out the laws, I'm just saying, if you lived in that neighbourhood, what yeah. would you say, if you went up to him and said, look, everyone's getting a bit fed up with this, look. I'd say, what, 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 what would I do? What do you mean, what would I do? <laughs> What, what are you asking me? <laughs> right, it doesn't matter. No, 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 what are you asking me? What are you asking me and Steve and well, the I'm public? I'm just saying, say if you live next door to this woman. Yeah. Right? The kid's hungry, eight years old, he's out playing on his bike and he goes, Mum, I'm getting a bit peckish, and he goes, all right, son. She whops one out. <laughs> Um, and he starts having his, having his milk, right? <laughs> you live, you live next door, you're putting your washing out, and you see this going on. <laughs> you're getting a bit sick of it, cause it's gone on for months. <laughs> Eight so, years, I see. Why is it your business? Just why are you, me... why are you such a nosy neighbour that you're concerned? What would you do, Carl? Let's turn it back on him. Yeah. What would you do? What's your solution? What would you do? Well, I thought, I'd say, right, why are you doing this? And she'd say, um, cause he likes it. And I go, all right then, put it in a bowl first. <laughs> Genius! So and you think that would sort that out? No, because uh, I was thinking about the whole thing, right, and you do that when you're a baby and everything's all right, innit? Yeah. No yeah. one bats an eyelid at sure. a little baby having, having a bit of milk from its mum's right. breast, right? Yeah. You'd almost say it was natural. But you grow out of it. <laughs> it's like, you don't see, it got me thinking about things you don't see, and you don't see- <laughs> Did you put this into a computer? Show me things you don't see. What else no. don't you see? Well, you don't see, like, an old man having a Twix. <laughs> <laughs> you never- <laughs> ah! Oh! So what? Oh, God. No, no. <laughs> You know, the, you know the terrible thing about all this, Steve, is he's right. You don't see it all No, I know, that's a but, terrible but, thing. But, so what they have got, right, they've made old man toffees, haven't they? They've come up with rovers. <laughs> is, is that a song? Oh, oh, God! You don't see it all <laughs> So they've got their worthers, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> Look at him! You Forget think he's it. giving a lecture Forget at it. Oxford? It's, it's not going anywhere. No, go yeah. on, sorry. Go on. I'm what? just saying. Right. You grow out of things. Yeah. And the old man, I'm sure when he was a kid, he'd have a twit. <laughs> yeah. But now it doesn't look right, so he's having- <laughs> It doesn't look right! So- Right. I don't think Werther's originals were specially designed for old people. I think they were sweets that just happened to have been made for years. Mm. That's why old people eat them. Yeah. They didn't go, hang on, there's a market here. I've <laughs> noticed old people aren't eating Twixes. Quick, let's make some yeah. old man sweets. But the, the, the little yeah. advert, he gives it to his grandson as well, doesn't he? He goes, I have a Werther's original. No, I so think it, it cuts though before he throws it back in his face and gets, <laughs> get, get me a twist. <laughs> yeah. XFM 104.9, we're not here. Um, oh, it is a bit like being Dennis Norden, playing some great, uh, great moments from the show. I, I was just imagining Dennis Norden one day, sort of just like waking up out of his stupor, he's doing this, and he'd go into the producer and go, I've just seen a couple of my programmes. I just saw it'll be right on the night 18. It's sh**. It is why, terrible. Why didn't someone tell me? Well, we, th we didn't want to upset you, because, uh, you know. But I've been doing it way too long. Were well, you could just let me go on forever? Well, until you died, yeah. Well, why can't my son take over? Well, he's 80, Dennis. <laughs> and the jokes I'm doing, they're awful. They're just, why have I got that clipboard? I, I've written these jokes, they're not funny. There's an audience, they're laughing. What are they laughing at? They're not at? laughing, they're not, they're not laughing. That's kind of laughter. Who are those audience? Who, who goes to an audience for It'll Be Right on the Night? A lot of them are older than you. It can't be right. You know, we have 15% fatality in one of your audiences. <laughs> but I went I went home at Christmas, I watched one of the episodes, yeah. which was with my family and friends, I said, watch this, you'll love it. Stony face, no one laughed, they all thought it was sh**, well it is sh**. 
Well, why didn't you tell me earlier? We didn't want to hurt your feelings. You're an old man. You may be upward of 102. <laughs> I didn't realise. Yeah. Here's a, a problem that someone's emailed in. Yeah. We're taking uh, emails today. If you've got a problem, a concern, um, or, you know, just a general query that you think Carl could answer for you. It could be about anything. It could be about some of the big kind of philosophical questions. Yeah. Um, it could be uh, you know, something to do with war or famine, anything like that. Or it could just be a personal dilemma, you know, something that's happening locally. Anyway, this seems one that I think you probably have... You and your father have probably come across this sort of dilemma in the past, mm. and I'm interested to know what your take is on it. Uh, let me see, this is from Lee Matthews by the look of it. He says, he lives in a suburban area where the local teenagers uh, also live on the same road, and they're running riot. They're smashing wing mirrors off the cars, they're crashing into park cars on their skateboards, and they're just generally making hay mayhem, you know, night and day. Uh, what can he do to stop this going on? Uh, the parents of the kids don't seem to give a damn. Anyone who complains to them, they just say, I'll oh, piss off. You know, the police are useless because they never catch him in the actual act of violence, which is what they've got to do to uh, apparently convict them. So uh, they, they don't know who to turn to, really. It's rather like when a little old lady went and got the eighteen, you know. The it's a, it's a, you know, and he was dressed as an elderly Chinaman. Exactly. She knew, she knew who he was. Colonel Decker didn't have a clue. Yeah. You see, it's weird because now, now it has got out of hand. Do sure. you know what I mean? Like years ago, when I was growing up on the estate, um, yeah, you had problems, but not like you have now. Do you no. know what I mean? Mm. Um, you know, Stammers someone... were nice as well, weren't they? <laughs> well, right. And Police are getting shorter, aren't you? But you yourself kind of admitted in the past that you were something of a tearaway. Did, you didn't do anything yeah, like never, these kids here. I mean, here, the but... thing is, I was, I was scared that if I got caught doing it, my dad would go mad. Yes. And I remember smashing a car window by accident and legging it in the lounge and sort of pretending to go asleep on the settee. Right? <laughs> Genius. And I heard a knock at the door. He chloroformed thought, himself <laughs> just to be unconscious when his dad came home. And there was a knock on the door and I thought, <laughs> oh God, this is a fellow who saw me. I was chucking a stone in the air, seeing how high I could throw it. <laughs> of course and you he, were. He Did it keep landing on your head? <laughs> That would explain a lot. <laughs> and, uh, it, it came down. Junk in the- uh, stone in the air, love <laughs> to it! To see how far I it's could throw brilliant. it. brilliant. So, you know, uh, I wasn't bothering anyone Did you invent that, that game? Right, did so you get anyway. the stone for your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> go and play with your stone. <laughs> he gave one to Suzanne. <laughs> Carl, go and play with your stone. <laughs> <laughs> no, the thing is, right, and it came down at a fun funny angle. And it, it, of course it did. It ate the back of this, uh car and the, and the back window is the most expensive because it has that heating thing in it yeah, in case yeah. you got a frosty window. Yeah. So I thought, oh god. <laughs> so I legged it in, got on the settee, went to sleep, knocked out the door. <laughs> Genius. It's <laughs> a brilliant plan. It's a brilliant plan. <laughs> I couldn't be guilty, I'm asleep. <laughs> so, so I love the idea. So uh, the thing is our lounge used to sort of, you could, you could see in from the door, right? So this family <laughs> who, uh, who I saw me do it, let, saw me asleep on the settee and my mum said, go and get the door. And I sort of went, oh, as if I'd been asleep. Yeah. And went to the door, like, rubbing my eyes. And, uh, the fella said, what did you run off for? I saw you. I was like, oh, no. And I didn't see me dad. I went out. It was when he was working, sort of, evenings. So I went out so I didn't have to see me dad. And then the next day I came, fr I came home from school and my dad said, 45 quid. Oof. That's all he said. That's all he looked at me. And then you fell asleep when he went, wake up, wake up, you know what I said, no, <laughs> yeah. 45 quid, now, the thing Carl, is, he, right. he didn't have to do 45 anything. 45 pounds, Carl, now I know you were saving up for a brick, <laughs> but you can't have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just do it. So, yeah, um, equally, if you're doing a bigger crime, you know, a yeah. bank job yeah. or a murder. Remember to take the stocking off your head, because they yeah. wake you up and go, why have you got a stocking on your head? Yeah. You just go, oh, I had a weird dream. <laughs> right, uh, okay, look, quick um, query for you, this is from uh, Jay, he's got a problem here. Um, he says, uh, my parents won't let me ditch my studies. He's currently reading modern languages at London University. Sure. He wants to follow his dream, but his parents won't let him, of being a dancer. Carl. Worse than that, he says that they're trying to arrange a marriage to a bunch of, uh, minging daughters of people they know from good families. He doesn't know what to do, so he's got the arranged marriage coming along, and he's also got, you know, he basically wants to, you know, wants to be a dancer. His parents are forcing him into, um, something more practical. Well, the first thing, right, I don't think Live the, your dreams? the arranged marriage thing is such a bad idea. Okay. Because I think too many people go on looks, right? And then you soon get bored of that, mm -hmm. and you find out the person who you're knocking about with is actually not your type. Right. right? Why don't you arrange marriages for people? Well, uh, I'm just saying, right? So I'd say, uh, Jay, go along with that. I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. I mean, if they're really ugly, then you know, don't go along with it. But if they're half bad, yeah, put up with it. That's right. <laughs> the dancing, brilliant. Right. <laughs> that's that solved. Brilliant. I want to be a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> After I did the boxing, right, I joined a, uh, joined a dancing thing just near, um, Man United's ground, right, called Twiggies. Right. Um, <laughs> went it? along, I wanted to learn some moves. And How I, old were you? Uh, well, it was when Michael Jackson was, like, pretty big, so, 
about 80, 83, 84, 85, right. something like that, around there. Um, wanted to do it. Um, when I went, it was shut and it had become like a warehouse for a toilet rolls. So in a way, I wonder what would have happened. Sorry, sorry, how is that an anecdote about you going through <laughs> dancing? Well, You've I'm told me before, you what, you did boxing for a while, you did dancing for a while, you had a true fight in the boxing, you didn't <laughs> even get in the pl That's not an- you, yeah, Imagine if that was a film! <laughs> this is a, a, a boy's dream of becoming a dancer. <laughs> oh, it's shut. Next on. I mean, you, how is that a story? Yeah, that was Billy Elliot. Do you think he would have won, a, <laughs> he won quite as many awards? Yeah, yeah, a brilliant. Footloose. All right, <laughs> yeah. I'm fed up, they banned it. Let's go, oh, it's shut. <laughs> um, do, 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 do. Yeah. Flash dance. First, there was, <laughs> oh, it's a warehouse. <laughs> Never mind. You. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, you'll find something else. I, I, can't, I think I got a go-kart after that. <laughs> I bought a motorised go-kart and kept myself busy with that. So, <laughs> there's always, there's always all those Just things. think, Alan Bennett has to sit down and really sweat over his stories. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He so, just opens his mouth. You are a living Alan Bennett character. So that's oh. that. So, so that's, that's solved. Well, Jay, don't worry about that. There's, um, no emotional there, emotional problems I can foresee. Uh, if you follow that advice. So the advice Sorry, there is do an arranged marriage. It, 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 if she's not if half she's not ugly. minging yeah. if she's not uh, completely minging yeah uh and don't worry about dancing get a go kart cheers <laughs> <laughs> This is XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky James with me Stephen Merchant. Hello. Uh, you're listening to the best of, basically, Carl Pilkington. You don't talk to anyone, do you, in the week? You just hide in your little sound booth thing and you really don't talk to anyone, do you, much? Not really. No. no I mean, you, you know, you might call up. Yeah. Uh, but no, I keep myself to myself. Yeah. Then you don't get bogged down in the office politics and stuff. Sure. Yeah. Is there I a lot know. of office politics here? I don't know. I don't get involved in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Proved your point. So, so, so yeah. when, um, we're away and we're, like, out of action, who, who, other than Suzanne, who will you talk to of the day? How will you get a sort of, uh, uh, f feedback from the world? How will you get sort of, like, input and... I always, if I've ever, uh, if ever I've got, like, a, a question on anything, the internet's sat there and I can just go on, online and find out... The internet is, is good. It's brilliant. But... It, it's not all verified. It's not all factually, necessarily factually accurate. Anyone can put things onto the internet. It's the, you know, that's it's, it's freaks and things that put on well, here's things one, right? like- Well, here's, here's one that I read in the week, right? One. <laughs> About this woman. Yeah. Uh, she was a bit of a punk. And, um, to get her hair done like she wanted it- Super glue. Right, now, she mm. got lard, apparently it's a popular thing, you might, you might know. Um, put lard on your head. Yeah. And you put it in the oven. <laughs> now, Apparently, the heat that you get from the oven is different from the sort of heat you get from an air dryer, right? And she had to do that to get the style that she wanted. But anyway, uh, she comes into the money or whatever, treats herself to a microwave, right? It doesn't, it's not true. Carl. Opens the door, jams the things, you know, like the little catch, so, so the microwave works. She jams it with a screwdriver or a knife or something. Yeah. Puts the microwave on, sticks her head in, boils her brain. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Right? Well, why is that ridiculous? <laughs> Boils her brain. She boiled her brain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she boiled her brain. And this is what's good about the internet. I went straight from that and there was a subject about brains. And do you know that Russell Gr Crowe, when he dies, is, is given his, his brain to charity or something? Some sort of... <laughs> some people who can do stuff right. with it. She gave hers to Pot Noodle. <laughs> <laughs> Vesta, yeah. Oh, that's boiling the sort of a skull. Yeah, that's that's not true. No. It's not true, Carl. No. Just urban myths. Someone made it up. <laughs> yeah, for a laugh. They're they're just too convenient. Urban myths. Everyone said uh, you can tell an urban myth not true because it's always this happened to a mate of mine, and and the, and the, when you say what happened then, they go, don't know. That was it. Was it? Was that it? Was it? Some boiled a brain, and that was it. There was no <laughs> more story. Were there any dates, locations, have you, have you, times? Have, I think it was in Belgium. There's that. There's that. There's that. <laughs> <laughs> there's that one. The, a bloke, right, was gonna get a phone call at four o'clock to find out if his business was, you know, okay, right? And if, if he didn't get the phone call, he knew he was, um, broke, destitute. So, uh, uh, uh dead on four o'clock, the phone didn't ring, so he went up to the, the, the roof, his office, and he jumped off to commit suicide. And as he was passing his window, the phone was ringing. Oh, no. 
<laughs> Carl, it didn't happen. Didn't happen. Think it through. Think it through. Who 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 told that story? Who told that story? As he hit the pavement at 120 miles an hour. He's the only person who could have known those that series of incidents. Also, why didn't and he he's wait, dead. as his life's at stake, why didn't he wait till five past? I said, I'm gonna give it five minutes just in <laughs> just case. In case the lines I, are busy. Yeah. And this and what sort of what sort of bloke goes, uh, I'll call you at four, okay, if your business well call me anyway. No, no. If I don't call exactly four, then uh no you yeah. could commit suicide. <laughs> commit suicide. <laughs> I would, because if I don't call at four, uh, that's the end of it. <laughs> well call me anyway. No that's not the way I work. <laughs> why can't he just call me and tell me the other way? Well, I'm telling you I would do it. <laughs> if you're bust, I don't call. Can't you just call to verify in case something goes wrong? What if he's engaged? If he won't be engaged? <laughs> just commit suicide at four, please. <laughs> it it didn't happen, Carl. Uh, the, the other one, right? A bloke, right? Uh, he's, he's on a uh, train station, and uh, uh, that's how I heard it. Um, uh, he's uh, uh, he's waiting for his uh, crew station, whatever, and um, he shits himself. Uh, as you do. <laughs> and so he goes, oh, my train's in five minutes, I need- So he runs across to Millet's and goes, quick, Levi's, 36. The bloke just puts it in a bag, he runs onto the train, uh, he goes into the- the toilet, takes his, uh, um, trousers and pants off. His soiled trousers yes. and pants. Throws them out of the window, I won't be needing those again. <laughs> Cleans himself off, open the bags, it's a jacket! Oh. No, it didn't happen, didn't Carl! Happen, Carl! At what point did he go into it and go, go, quick, Levi's 36, and the bloke went, sorry, Levi's 36, what, a pair? No, oh, no, no, shall I wrap them? Them? It. It. Shall I wrap? <laughs> Just wrap whatever it is. Do you want to look? No. Do, I'm not looking when you're putting it in the bag, please. Right? <laughs> Uh, well, 36 mm. white stories, well, well, not, don't say anything. <laughs> I've told you 36 Levi's. <laughs> they put yeah. it in a bag yeah. and charge me for it. Yeah. I don't oh. want to discuss it further. Yeah. There was one, um... Here we go. There was one about a woman whose yeah. husband died, and she had him cremated, yeah. and made, uh, made like a little egg timer out of him, mm. and she said, I did that, so it can still help around the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> well, that might be true. That might be a joke. That's quite sweet. That no, might be that true. That is true story, again. It was all- No, not again, because the ones I just told weren't. Nor is the boiling the brains in a bag, curry, microwave. <laughs> Head story, true. Yeah. That's all. Um, I'd like to play a beautiful song now by Cat Stevens called <coughs> Lily White. It's, it's lovely. A song for the lovers, right? Yeah. 